you all had an opportunity to look at the consent agenda. Uh, it, it is uh, as you'd expect it to be. The, uh, the financial side of the consent agenda, we show about 158000 I believe, is what it came out to for the close the books out this month. The tax revenue has begun to just trickle in a little bit, but uh, typically about May 8th or the 9th is when we will when we will see that. So we will certainly have a much better feel next month whenever we come in. But but uh, all in all, we feel good. There have been a few new expenses that have come up because of the virus. But then in the end, a couple other cases there have been some savings also, and so those have kind of been a wash for us. I don't see those being a concern at this point. Uh, uh, but You've had an opportunity to look at the consent agenda, and I would recommend that we approve the consent agenda. Our board, we have a recommendation that we may approve the consent agenda. Uh, any questions or comments? If uh, not, we entertain a motion. So moved. I have a motion to get a second. Second. A motion to second. All in favor uh, of the uh, motion, please signify so the same Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. We have a uh, hold harmless resolution in your packet. Uh, this is something that has been recommended that districts pass. As you know, under the guidance of, of the governor, we are we are uh, keeping everybody on full time, even though some people aren't working full time, some people are far from full time. But uh, uh, we have a lot of people working at home. Of course, our teachers are working very hard every day uh, uh, with their lessons. But they're, they're, uh, that does create some problems with timesheets when the auditors come in next year. So it was recommended that we uh, pass a hold harmless, and that was that was provided to you. That basically says that you are aware that due to the due to the COVID nineteen outbreak, that we will continue to pay even though some of those people don't necessarily work the full allotment of hours that they normally work. This is what all districts in Northwest Arkansas are signing, and this really won't be a factor until next year when the auditor comes around. And we want to make sure we have everything in place for them. Do you have any questions about what the whole harmless is or does? So when I read through it, so basically it'll just kind of from the start date of when we had to go through all this to basically the end of the school year now. Yes. Just kind of the window of time frame that anybody, anybody ever comes back and says, hey, this is the threshold of It helps the time to we have. create some dis there's some discrepancy in time sheets, you know, it's, right. you know, we are we are paying people that cannot sign a time sheet that necessarily says they work forty hours a week. So this is the way of, of making sure that you all are aware that we are operating there. I would recommend then that we approve the whole harmless resolution as presented. Uh, we'll get a recommendation to approve the whole harmless resolution. Uh, any other questions or comments? If not, we uh, get a motion. So moved. I have a motion. May I get a second? Second. Motion to second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, every year we have to approve our uh, statement of assurances for special ed for the federal government to receive federal money. We have to operate, which of course we would and will at all times operate within federal guidelines for, for special ed and IDEA. Uh, this is a, a document that we sign every year and it's just saying that you all are aware that to receive these monies, we will, we will uh, have to operate within those guidelines and, and we, we certainly will. So uh, if nobody has any questions, I would recommend then that we approve the statement of resolution. Or the state statement of assurance. I'm sorry. All right. Well, we have a recommendation to uh, approve the statement of assurance for special education. We have either comments or requests. Not may entertain a motion. So, I have a motion and a second. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, say aye. Aye. That passes. Okay. I will need to get that signed by uh, you, Mr. Warren. You leave tonight, if you would please. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I provided the email to you that Dr. Cagney sent me. We have had some problems with the roof over at the co op, just so, so everybody knows on, we're on, on the same page. The co op is our building. Uh, we do lease it to the co op, and, and we offer the co op a, a competitive rate to have it. Of course, for our district, it's advantageous because when we have trainings, we don't have to pay mileage for people to travel to Springdale or Bentonville or anywhere else. So there's some advantages, certainly advantages to having that co-op on our campus. That round building is our building and it's just leased. And we have had water problems, uh, roof problems in that building before. We have, we have worked on that and uh, uh, 
uh, with some of the changes over in our, our maintenance department, uh, we had a uh, uh, Stearman Roofing come in and look at it, and they, they have not given us anything yet, but I did realize the timing of my situation and how all that works, and, and so I just wanted to, to get that information out to you that I'm going to investigate that as, as we move forward, and then in May, you all can come back and make whatever decision you, you want to make and deem appropriate to make on that. Uh, the one thing I will tell you from meeting with the Stearmans is, is it's very much like a roof on your house. They, they can patch it and get us two or three years for X amount of dollars. They can, they can step up what they do for more money. And, and ultimately, we can go all the way out to the fact of trying to put a new roof on it where we won't have to worry about the roof for 25 years. But uh, we certainly do have a building that, that tonight, as we were preparing for the meeting, will leak as, as uh, it rained tonight. And uh, uh, certainly, certainly look, at, look at what our options are as we move forward this month, and then I'll bring you that information next month as I, as I gather more of it. Fair enough? Okay. Uh, Elisa Jones, you all have had an opportunity to meet Elisa Jones. Elisa Jones used to work for the Department of Facilities. She now works with us as, an, as a facilities representative. She forms our master plan, uh, works, works with me to form the master plan. She really does the paperwork end of it. Uh, Elisa plays a role in the fact that, that since she used to work at the, the department, she understands how the game works at the department. If you all that have been here on the board for a few years, remember a few years ago we had a, we had a problem with a grant that we had sent in and, and uh, she said we didn't, and after we looked at it, we didn't, and she knew the rules very well and got that fixed, and as I recall, it was on this building. And so we were, we were able to move forward, and her, her assistance in that matter was certainly worth much more than, than, than what we pay her. Uh, she, she has been a great asset for us, and, and uh, she has set up the master plan for both the expansion of the junior high and for the expansion at Folsom that could happen the year after that. And so uh, uh, I, my plan would be to keep her, she, it's $5,000 to keep her for a year, keep her for another year, and then at that point, you know, you, you all and, and Mr. LaFoon would look at that and see if that's the way you want to continue or not. But, but uh, she certainly is invested in getting us off the ground with the junior high. There's a lot of money on the table, and. And uh, having her expertise, I think, is, is a great asset for us. I'd entertain any questions you have about her, or what she does, or anything. But how many years have we used her? We've used her for five years now, I believe it is. Just a guess, a quick guess about how much we've saved so far. How much? Well, I'm, I'm, no, she, 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 she opened the door on this building uh, when we were when we were uh, uh, in a position where. So, so I don't know. I don't know the amount of money she has saved us per se. Is the fact that if we would have had the same issue with them, we have nobody in the district that has the expertise with the Department of Facilities to go down and meet with them face to face and tell them this is where you messed up. And and uh, so you know the, what she really probably saved us was whatever an attorney would have cost and whatever it would have cost time wise to back up our high school projects. So you remember two more things. Yeah, I think we got moved into high school like August 1st, you know, so, so we couldn't have backed up much more. Yeah. So, so my recommendation is that we would, we would keep Miss uh, Jones for another year under this contract. All right, well, we have a recommendation to uh, keep Eliza, Eliza Jones for uh, say this every year, I don't know that there's a good way to do it. The policy changes came out to you. We, we have worked on those uh, uh, for a few days, and, and uh, there's just, that's a hard thing to do, to get them out and get them, to go through them and get them out to you all in a, in a timely fashion. I know that was a lot of things to look at. Uh, I, I want to I tell you, just to go back, you know, since we have a new one, uh, uh, we, we use 
the Arkansas School Board Association model policies. Uh, they, they have their attorneys that work those up. We get those policies and we have an opportunity to go through those policies before we bring them to you all. Uh, but we have a time frame that we need to get them approved by you all before then our contracts go out. So, so all of that tends to come in all at about the same time. Uh, uh, we tend not to tweak the model policies much, if any. We are paying experts, we are paying attorneys to draw those up. Ms. Pinkerton, myself, Ms. Drove, Mr. Pierboy, people that look at that, we're certainly not attorneys and we don't know the, you know. So these policies that came in, in, in uh, virtually every case, in many of the policy changes are no more than change a legal reference or correct a misspelled word or, or something along those lines. But we did not modify any of the policies away from how they were recommended. We will, we will we, many years ago, 10 years ago, more than that, uh, we did modify, or a mo policy or two was modified, and just the changing of a word or two then made the policy read different than how it was intended to. So we are, we are very hesitant about changing a single letter in, in the policies. And so um, I think that gives you all assurance that, that they are, are uh, uh, well vetted by the attorneys and that they are in, <coughs> in compliance with, with Arkansas code and, and uh, I would, I would tend to get more worried on your end if we had tweaked them a lot and written a lot of our own language in them. But uh, as, as they come to you tonight, they are as presented to us. Uh, we find them, we find them to, if, you know, if we can work with them, they certainly, in most cases, we have no choice to go all the way and we have to work with them. There was one that we came up too late. Stephanie, would you talk real quick since they haven't really had much chance to look at that? About 8.37. It's classified policy for social networking ethics. Basically what this adds to it are some definition, definitions defining what social media accounts are, um, things like that. Um, it basically covers, um, it adds those teaching under a waiver are responsible of, for the same code of ethics as any other teacher would be. I think previously someone teaching on a waiver Anybody have any questions about the policies that came out to you all? Any concerns? Anything you would like to? Then I would recommend that we approve the policies uh, as presented. Before we have recommendation to uh, approve changes to the school policies as presented, uh, any further questions or comments? If no, may I make a motion? So moved. Motion, may you have a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay. On, on construction update, we kind of talked about this a few minutes ago, so I'll we'll go back over it real quick. Uh, uh, asbestos removal is going to begin tomorrow in the old gym. Most of that, as I recall, is, is related to the glue that's in the floor tile. Uh, uh, they have gone in, they have taken everything out now that is bolted or attached to the floor in any way and, and uh, piled all that up in the middle of the gym. That on that rubber floor, and now they will come in and they will remove all those tiles. That will take about a week. The building will be sealed up, and there will be a, and I can't, a negative air chamber in it, so the air that's inside will be recirculated. The air will not come out, I guess is the way it is. They told me that it would be safe for people to walk by, although we put the fence around part of it, and we, will, we uh, won't have people at the school in that area tomorrow or really over the next week. So uh, it, it certainly ought to be well secured. That will take about a week. Then after that, uh, sometime this time next week, they will begin the teardown of that facility. And uh, uh, I think the teardown will go fairly quick. And I think the haul off because of the sheer number of material there is there will, will take a while. But uh, uh, that is moving forward. That is now actually a little bit ahead of schedule. So. You know, we feel we feel good about that. Get, getting that out of the way, that is certainly the first step in in the addition on the junior high and the building on of the, of the junior high. Did you have something you wanted to add? Okay, all right. Uh, uh, that that building has has certainly served its time, hasn't it? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Yes, and uh, I can remember my I think my first year here in '99, that roof on that building was condemned, and 
They said, you can use it 10 more years, and we've got a lot more to do. <laughs> so, about those windows at the top of that? And the bleachers used to go up all the way to windows. Mm -hmm. Those top windows? Those top windows sure did. Think about how so it's mountain goat steep now. I tell you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you have to have a rope to get up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of history in that building. And, yes, it is. Uh, uh, you know, in, in that regard, it's a bit sad. You know, in the other regard, is you know, it's exciting to move forward mm -hmm. and get a get a great facility for those kids as they come through. And so, so uh, we will we will look forward to getting that down and look forward to. The rebuild phase, which is which is certainly yeah. coming right around the corner. That river floor and there's 41 years old. Now they got their money out of it, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> no. mm -hmm. Any questions about construction? Other than that, everything's wait and hold, just like just like it always is. We'll wait to hear on on the junior high. We probably won't hear, you know, until until uh, uh, somewhere around February on it, something along those lines. Um, the, the, during the special session, they will appropriate funding, but they won't designate it out to which facilities yet. So it, it will it will be a while, but hopefully, you know, we'll have everything in place and ready to go. So when we do get the approval, we'll be ready to move forward with that. Uh, any questions or thoughts on, on construction? Okay. I have I've asked Mr. Purifoy to come and he he and uh, Clayton I know have worked very hard on you know the the the, the virus has been a certainly a, a an amazing time. Uh, it just changed our world in so many ways, and and uh, it's changed what we do here every day. It's changed what we're doing here tonight. Um, but certainly, the one thing it's changed that that has as much passion as just about anything is graduation. And uh, Mr. Purifoy and Clayton have have worked on this and talked about this for quite a while. And and uh, we just thought it'd be good to come to the meeting and just keep you all informed as to some of the things that have taken place and where we're at. Uh, may take me a little bit, but I'll just kind of go through it. Um, I know that you all know most of this, but not all of this. The governor said uh, they announced that graduation cannot be held before July 1, um, which that's what kind of we felt, uh, to be honest with you, in the beginning. That's why we have not set a date. We kind of felt like it's going to take a lot longer. Uh, we didn't want to. We didn't want to be the first ones out there because we we knew it was going to take a lot longer. We don't want to be the last ones. I understand that, but we still got to think about all of the things that could possibly happen. Uh, the target date is July one, obviously. Um, prior to that, we can we can send in um, ways that we can do it virtually or anything like that, which I'll have some of those to show. If, if that's what you all might want to do. Uh, when you do that, the restrictions obviously are 10 or less, um, which we are aware of that. Um, as Johnny Key said, he asked that schools be patient as we go through this. Um, some of the things that might come up, and I'm just going to give these to you, parents who are separated or live in different states or, or grandparents or family members, they're, they're probably going to take off once we set a date. They're probably going to sit, they're probably going to try to buy some plane tickets. That's just going to happen. Um, they're going to take vacation days when we set this date. Um, and if it doesn't come fruition on this date, then we can put the word possible right there, possibility of having graduation on this date. They're not going to look at the word possible. So just keep that in mind. If we do set a date tonight, and I'll be glad to do whatever. We decided about having, having the graduates come back to the, one of the football games. We thought about this, having them come back, present them on the football field, and have graduation the next morning, if that's possible. Those are one of the things that we thought about. We visited about having graduation around Christmas. We all know that they probably wouldn't want to do that, but I do know the numbers are still going up. We're not going to be able to do anything until the numbers start going down. And and it's got to go way down for us to be able to do it. We, we can host a virtual, virtual graduation, give each student four tickets, line them up at the bus turnaround, start them down here, and they'll have their selves. And the reason I said four is because we have some that are divorced that have been remarried, and so that way it gives the husband and the new wife and the, the wife and the new husband 
be able to be with their kids as they walk through here. We can line them up 10 feet apart, keep them separated with chairs. They move up when the next group moves up. They can hear the balance sound present and the class president. We will have it on the speakers. We'll have it on the cameras so everybody will be able to see something um, and have them all lined up to be able to walk across that stage and then walk out those doors without getting any closer than 10 feet from each other. So we can do something like that. We could have a drive-by graduation, <clears throat> which means that they'll line up in the parking lot out here. They drive by, they get out, they come up on the stage out front, accept their diploma, get back in their car, drive back around and park. That way they can watch all of their folks out here in the parking lot receive their diploma. All that can fit in the car, obviously. Um, we are going to announce, obviously, when we do do this graduation, we're gonna, we didn't have awards night um, like we normally do, but we will announce that at graduation, which could make graduation take a little bit longer than normal because we're gonna announce each student's name, what they received, what scholarship, what awards. Um, May 4th, like, well, I hot all this, and I'm not going to worry about that because it's going to be after July 1 anyways. Uh, we're planning on sending out a survey to the students this week, um, see what their interests are, and kind of going from there. Um, if you would ask kids right now, I can just tell you they'd rather just say, give me the diploma. I don't care about graduation, but those are kids. We know that a lot of it is for the parents. So... Uh, we do understand that we're going to get some of those replies. The reasonable date that we thought of to set would be July the 24th. That would be the first reasonable date. That's if everything goes the way that we're hoping it to go, to be able to house everybody out, out there. Um, obviously, if we set that date and the governor says no, we could still do a virtual, but it would be housed in here. So it would be quite a bit different. <clears throat> um, as of right now, we all know no one can stay in hotels. Um, we could wait. We could wait if you wanted to till the next board meeting. meeting. We may have a month from now to s decide that we may have a clearer idea of when we may be able to do it. Um, so those are just thoughts that I'm throwing out there. The good thing about it is, is we've handed out the caps and gowns, which they were excited about that. If we had 100 and I'd say 50 that had paid all their dues, I would say 75% and above come and picked up their cap and, cap and gowns. I'm sure the other ones didn't work. Right now we're putting together um, it's a spring sports video, a video of our arts department, you know, um, and in a video of our C CTE department and a video of our seniors, we're going to try to put it on the Jumbotron where they can drive up and watch it in the evening time, which will be two minutes and 20 seconds long to that type deal. Those are things that we're going to try to do for them. And then the awards night ceremony, we're going to dress up, me and Mr. Williams, and read off the awards that the kids received, although that they're not going to get them handed to them, at least at they'll have their name and announced and they can go on there and look at it. So that being said, that gives you a lot of information of things that could possibly happen. We're still in an area of unknown, which is very unusual for someone in my position because we can usually tell you and give you the answer. And I don't have an answer for this right now. And that's what's mind boggling to me because I don't know what I don't know. So, but normally I could sit here and tell you this is what we're going to do. I will tell you this. I went ahead and built the, we're building the new stage because I had planned on having a stage set up out there on the field. And I had a plan to have a stage set up here just in case for rain, you know, because when they come in for graduation, that's supposed to happen on May the 12th. If it was raining out there, we'd be coming in here. We could still house everybody in here. It's not as comfortable, but we had a backup plan. So that is being done, but, um, you know, 
I've had I've had a bunch of advice. Everybody everybody's got advice. I promise you. And they all they all tell me. Twenty fourth is that Saturday? That's a Friday. The reason I said it on a Friday is because in case it does rain and we do get to have the full graduation, we can move it to Saturday. Okay. And normally we don't see a lot of rain in July. Yeah. So that's what I was kind of hoping. But we can always wait until the end of May. You'll still have two months to make a decision on a date and we may have more information at the end of May. So it's... I think that's great, John. I appreciate your what you've done. You plan you did on that. Are you planning? Are you thinking a morning morning graduation or evening? <clears throat> it's got to be a morning because of the heat on the turf. Uh -huh. They ain't gonna be able to stand it. And I'm still gonna allow them to wear shorts. It'll be a different shorts and tennis shoes. Um, it'll be a totally different dress outfit than than normal. Because yeah. it won't. Because we don't want to burn them up. So your tentative date is July 24th. If, if everything goes fine, would that still still limit the social distancing or if that's all clear would we still be able to if it's all clear we'll all be able to go but i would imagine with the shape that we're in right now our country's in it's still going to be social distancing and we may have to revert to something different limit but the, limit the number of people that come per family. that's right i may have to give out Take two it. tickets where mom and dad show up and we have x is on the seats and this is where you have to sit I, we don't know that though i don't have an answer but we can still broadcast that be yeah it's all we can all broadcast everything yeah and that's what we would do if, if we had the social distance in here we could broadcast it and you'd see it everywhere a lot of local schools are jumping on like july 2nd on that now aren't they so i think it's wise that we yeah, push yeah. off uh, i don't know i don't need personally fayetteville fayetteville's july 1st or 2nd so obviously second. that's gonna have to be backed up and, and Prairie Grove is August 1st. Uh, other than that, other than that, I'm going to say this, and it, you know, but this is what I believe to be true from our meeting last Wednesday, is that every every school that was on our teleconference the other day has picked a date, uh, uh, except Springdale, and Springdale is electing to go with a with a uh, non-traditional. I don't even remember, so I don't want to say, but it is a non-traditional show up, get your picture taken, we hang in your diploma, mm -hmm. and you and mom, you know, y'all leave, and the next year it comes up. But um, the, the real deal, I think, is, is the most important thing to start with is, do you want to try to have a face-to-face -face graduation in July, if it's possible? Or, or would you rather just proceed on with... Uh, a virtu a it's a, meeting, virtual. a virtual a virtual graduation and move on I, I i did notice and i can't say this is graduation you might have seen it i caught the tail end of it ozark apparently had some kind of virtual something i saw the other day i know that there was one school that had scheduled a face-to-face -face graduation before july one and and uh i think that that is, is kind of what triggered the governor to to say hold on I think I think the real deal is: Do you think, do you think, as representatives of the community, that, that the community wants to have a face-to-face -face graduation, normal graduation, if possible, in July, or do you think that they don't? I think they will. Just you know, uh, it's a limited number of, of people I talked to just said that's not a representative number by any stretch. But uh, one thing I've heard is just if we can get back to something. The, the one thing about setting a date, as John proposed the, the 24th, the one thing about setting a date like that is it, it's, it's not like we're canceling it. It'll be the governor canceling it. And so if it does create hardships for, for, for people, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but we, you know, we're sitting here with 10 people in the room, six feet apart, because that's what the governor's told us we have to do, and we'll have to do what he says in that case also. But... Uh, I know, I know that some a couple of the schools are, are talking about having face-to-face -face graduation if they have to go to December. Uh, I would think that I think the, we would all like to get it done in July if we could. And what we've still at least got the kids here before they go off to college and wherever they go to work or wherever or the military or whatever. 
We've still got a chance to get them in July. And if if if, if it does, you know, some you, you watch the governor, you take the prison numbers out. For a few days it gets better, and then for a couple days it tweaks back up, and then a few days it gets so I don't I don't know how we know. Yeah, personally, John, I think it's I think it's a tough decision. I think you've done a great job, but me personally, I think you stick to July twenty fourth and strongly emphasize tentative. Depending on you know state Maybe regulations or whatever, the because I think if you go past that, you're just going to lose the number of people that you can recognize appropriately. Okay. No, I don't want to throw a monk in. Well, let me. I just, we have we have any graduated seniors that we know are going into the military. I, you know, there is some. I don't know how many, and I don't know when their start date is. Maybe get them through, you know, with their parents or whatever. But, um, Does anybody know if that's changed? You know, where we this? catch it, huh? Does anybody know if that's changed with the military since this? I'm sorry, what? Does anybody know if that, those start dates have changed? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just I'm one of sure. a couple of questions you throw in your survey, John. Yeah. When, when, when you leave them for school or vacations they might have planned about. But I, think that's, I, th I think that's a great idea. I personally would rather, I'd like to see a face to face graduation. You know, I think for some people, that's their. That's it. I mean, you know, it's the last big deal. Yeah, it's, and, uh, it's a big it, deal for us as a school. It's, uh, you know, you know, for some of us, it was a great achievement to graduate high school. Sure. You know? Sure. So. I, I prefer to face to face myself. Yeah. I, mean, I think most families would. And I, I'm like, Mr. Purefoy, I don't know if some yeah, of the kids, kids would, would vote that way. They probably would. Yeah, kids would be Said that would still give yeah, them eight two, weeks to yeah, two, two months. months to to uh, make their plans, which will be plenty of time. But it but it will let people know that we've had a discussion about it. We're we're aware of the you know the the concern families have as, as far as wanting to wanting to get some closure to the senior year. It's been a tough year for the seniors, and and uh, uh, that would you know. How many are in graduation class? Be about 187 ish, somewhere around that number. So we, we, we didn't necessarily have to take any action on that tonight. I just wanted, you know, John and I had been talking about it and we just thought it would be best to share it with you all. Then what we will do is we will just say tentatively we're looking for the 24th, but we are going to wait until the May board meeting to make a final determination on that. Uh, we'll be tracking the numbers uh, that are presented daily. And, uh, uh, you know, after May the 4th, I believe it is, we're going to find out how the governor feels about phase one. And uh, we will be working through the, you know, this obviously, I can't remember if it's phase one or phase A, but, but whatever it is, having that many people together would certainly be phase three or C or four or D, you know, we way down the list. So, uh, uh, but I did notice uh, the other day that he had listed churches possibly coming back in, yes. in sometime at the end of May. And, and certainly if churches, if you can come back with three or four hundred people in a church, Probably could put a certain amount of people outside in the around the football stadium too, you know. So, uh, but again, go back to May. We may not have, you know, they may have a number, you know, at that point in time, uh, your seating capacity of how much you can have. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can give that, and then we'll know that you can invite six people, mm -hmm. you know, instead of four, you can invite six. I just don't know the answer. I, 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 yeah, because we normally have the answer for you, you know. I mean, we don't, you know. So, any other questions or thoughts on that? John, anything you want to add to it? I don't think so. Okay. 
All right, thank you, John, for everything important. Uh, couple of uh, on our on our personnel personnel this time of year changes daily yeah right the daily this is as of today based on the interviews that have taken place in the in the various buildings and in the various departments this is where we are except for I do need to add one additional that came in later that is uh, Lindsay Meek, secretary at the middle school. I'll give you a... As a hire? Or? As a hire, yes, I'm sorry, I apologize. Yes, as a hire. Stephanie, we have two additional people that are... That are uh, Coming into the central office, you want to say anything about that? You said it on that on that interview. For Julie Stewart and Carrie Morrison's positions, we interviewed six people. For those three positions, there are only a couple of people around to fill those positions. I think Mr. Levin thought that would be a very good fit for those jobs. Karen Lipford will come over for accounts payable. She has been the food service secretary, so we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot a little bit. If there are no questions or concerns with that, I would recommend that we hire that slate of personnel that's presented tonight. Set a meeting date for next month. I believe our normal meeting date would would it be on Memorial Day? It would. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna? Let's assume we're all going to the lake on the 25th. That's right. All right. <laughs> you wanna plan on having it on the 18th? Jeff, I'm for that. Well, what now? I said your boss makes you work at me. Yeah. The 18th working for you? It's the 18th. All right. Well, let's just set our, Amy, 18th work for you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's just set our date then for May 18th. We will see where we're at. Uh, if we are if we are back to where we can meet as a group, we can come back to the boardroom. If we do have to separate and socially distance, we'll probably come back here or somewhere like this since there's more space. Uh, we, will, we will probably... Uh, Go ahead and meet in person. I think that's the second time we've done this. Y'all seem to be okay. We're we're far enough away, and I think we've done a good job of keeping ourselves apart. So, um, okay. The only other the only other item I'd like to add, I'd just like to let you all know that uh, the Williams family, Donald and Maribel, have, have uh, donated some money to the district, and uh, about forty thousand dollars, and they asked. They said that they didn't want to make a big deal out of that, and I don't want to. I want to honor their wishes, but I also want y'all to know that they did that. It's a, a, a great gift. Uh, we have, they have certainly uh, helped our district out before in other ways, as as some other people in the community have also. But uh, uh, that is that is a wonderful thing. We are we are looking at uh, a couple of things we can do uh, uh, in the areas of, of technology. Uh, maybe a couple things related to uh, uh, some outdoor facilities and outdoor classroom type areas and that we can use that money for and uh, I did just 
want to tell you all about that. I want to say thank you and 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 or thank you to them. And and uh, as you as you see them in passing, you know, see them in town. You know, I I, I did want you all to know a wonderful thing. Good 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 people. Good great supporters of this school district. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Mr. Warren. Hey, I, I just want to say, really didn't get to talk about it with all this to happen. But you know, a couple months ago, whatever it was, five, six weeks, whatever ago, it was when we hosted the state tournament in basketball. Uh, I heard the the amount of positive comments that come out of that. I I don't know how much hard work and how much time you put in, but I just want to tell you, thank you. That that I thought that that I've been to a lot of state tournaments. And I thought that that was his first class uh, as I've seen. And, uh, you know, we were very proud and, and honored to have this facility. But the things I heard from the people that came in from out of town that had no idea, you should be commended by the yeah, John did a great job. He, he took that, took it, the bull by the horns on that, yeah. ran with it in the whole process. And, and uh, uh, he, did a, he did a wonderful job with it. And it was a great opportunity yeah. to show our show our school district off. Yes, I'm, I'm very, very proud good. Very proud to say I'm a, I'm a Farmington guy and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I, I want to thank you. I want to okay. thank you for that, John. It's a great job. Right. And I hate it that yeah. our girls didn't get to play in the state championship because I think they were the best yeah, team. I did too. I'm also uh, very honored and happy to, that we can call them state champs. Yeah. You know, so I, they had a great season. I, I, would, I would tell you, John did a great job of doing that. Organized every bit of it from the from going to Little Rock to lay the initial claim to have it, to uh, being here every night to work it. It also wouldn't have been able to work without other people who who uh, came in when John said, I need help. And one of them sitting right over here, Miss Pinkerton, uh, in the hospitality room in here, was here every day and every night feeding, I don't know, hundreds of people every night. And uh, uh, we are, we are lucky to be here. We're lucky to have the people that we have to work with. And uh, when, a, when an opportunity came where they could shine, they, they certainly did, both of them. They made the best of it. They showed our, showed our school and our facility off and, and our district and our community and couldn't be prouder of both of them for all the work that they I just want to say thank you, man. I yep. appreciate it. Other than happy birthday, Mr. Warren. Should we, should we sing or have hay or balloons? Or something? Yeah, that's what that really slowed me down. Oh, happy birthday. Thanks. It's a good word. Yes, sir. I'm sure. I have nothing else. All right. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. I'll see you all faces. We are adjourned. Thank uh you. -huh.